we are at the most exciting and one of the most monumental moments in Safari Live history and for the second time ever I, I'm very privileged to be able to join Hayden Turner to be able to show you one of the most endangered animals in Africa and we have the black rhino, well in this case the East African black rhino and I know there's been a lot of discussion about whether we should or shouldn't and, and show them but this is a completely different ecosystem to the Sabi Sands. There's only about 30 left in the whole Mara and they are constantly monitored every day by rangers. They know where each individual is. I've actually seen this particular rhino from up in the air. It is uh, the dominant bull that rolls around the Mara River and uh, this is just too exciting. I actually can't contain myself and uh, just one word tweet. How does seeing a rhino live in Kenya make you feel? Hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. One word tweet. How does it make you feel to see a black rhino for the first time ever in Safari Live history? Because I think the only other rhino ever shown was a white rhino. So uh, there we go. A black rhino bull marching off into the thickets. This is just too incredible for words. Now we've seen quite a lot of them. Uh, well, a lot of the individuals that live around here. And uh, he, he is a particularly feisty character he's got such wonderful 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 attitude uh, he even gave us a little snort when we first saw him but I think he's on a mission heading up towards directly below Ngama where there might be a girlfriend or two although his girlfriend in this area has got a sub-adult and uh, is not quite willing to accept his advances just yet this is just too incredible for words. Now, I know, as I said, a lot of people were umming and ahhing and whether this is the right decision or wrong decision. And we've discussed, and I've lost comms with Final Control. Um, so I'm just gonna keep talking for now. And so, oh, there we go, they're back. Okay, they're back. So w what what has happened is we've discussed with, 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 with the, the the management of the Mara and everyone. Of course, if anything changes, we will uh, change that decision. But we're under the, well, I, I'm personally under the feeling that um, the more you know something, the more you like something, the more you love something, the more you will protect something. Oh, there we go, our first one word tweet from Angelina. Astounded, yes, it is astoundingly wonderful, Angelina. And uh, he's going to disappear quite soon into those thickets, but we're going to enjoy every last second with him while we can. Now, as I said, these, these rhino are actually monitored on a daily basis. Um, out of a 24 period, they probably have eight hours where rangers spend time with them uh, and watch them. And this is actually a rhino we don't see as often because he tends to be in the no off-roading zone around the Mara River. So this is extra special uh, to see this particular gentleman as he's on his morning march. Uh, Mary, astounded. Well, Mary, I am astoundingly happy to be able to share this experience with you. And one must remember that like animal behavior in different parts of Africa, uh, we, we, we have different situations and different views that, that 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 warrant different responses and that's why we are we are comfortable showing a rhino in the Mara and the fact that these animals are so well protected and that the guys here do such a fantastic job keeping an eye on them and uh, the Maasai people are so pride proud of the wildlife heritage they have that I feel for any poacher who tries to come here because he might end up on the end of a spear Even the frogs are giving us a, a slow clap almost. It, it rained quite a bit last night. Um, so the, the frog life is, is booming this morning. Sarah, I think Sarah's actually hit the nail on the head here in terms of that one word tweet, honored. I think that is perfectly, perfectly, perfectly said, Sarah. I'm, 
incredibly honored to be able to share this with you and we're all honored to see probably one of the most amazing creatures in the whole of Africa. I, I, I have a, a particular particular soft spot for black rhino in particular not quite as soft as as Jamie Jamie's worked with them and spent a lot of time and studying them and and, and watching them uh, I've been chased up a tree numerous times by them <laughs> but there, there is a there is something incredible about being able to see and 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 as, as Sarah said we're honored to be able to witness uh, this rhino as he disappears into the into the thicket he's about to or is he gonna stop for a snack Oh, he's stopping to mark his territory. So, one of the big differences between white rhino and black rhino is that a black rhino will kick its tongue around, it'll spread it, whereas a white rhino will generally also spread it, but, but not as much. And there's a wonderful Indabele story about why a black rhino well, Dina, are those ox peckers on the rider? Yes, they are, Dina. Um, now, there's a wonderful Indabele story which comes from Zimbabwe uh, about why the black rhino spreads his dung. So, the black rhino likes to eat bushes, and particularly he likes to eat thorny bushes like acacias and, and dicrostachys. And while he was feeding, he went through a particularly thorny patch and slit open his side. And it was quite sore and he wanted to get some stitches, but he didn't know how to stitch. So he went to the only animal in the African bush that has a needle. Who else would you go to? But the porcupine. So he went to the porcupine and borrowed a quill. And he stitched up his side. And then on his way back, he was carrying the quill in his mouth. And black runners have this particular trot. They sort of... And um, while he was trotting and breathing, as they breathe quite heavily, he just went and he swallowed the quill. And he's been to this day too embarrassed to go to Porcupine because he's never been able to return the quill. So when he has a, has a, a movement, as James Henry would say, uh, he kicks it around and he's continuously searching for that porcupine quill so he can return it to porcupine and they can maintain their friendship it's probably been about a million years now so he's probably out of luck but uh, that rhino has disappeared that was just too incredible um i, I didn't catch the name there but someone was asking about rhino vocula vocalizations and black rhino vocalizations in particular are some of my favorite um i'm going to embarrass myself heavily by trying to mimic but they they they, they talk in squeaks and squeals is the best way to describe this. Now that sounds nothing like a black rhino, but I tried. But wasn't that incredible? A black rhino bull, it's the first for me ever on uh, Safari Live. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. And, and, and please, please understand that we, we, we didn't go into this lightly. Um, there was lots of discussion with, with, with the management of the park, the rangers, uh, the Maasai people, who, who own the land there and, and it wasn't something we just decided oh we're going to do it now there, there was obviously a lot of consideration and if something had to happen to change and, and we felt that we were in any way aiding uh, the, the, the nefarious factions of, of the world in terms of getting hold of Rhino we, we would stop it again immediately and um, and so, as I said, said it's not something we went into lightly, and uh, we were just very honoured and privileged that we are able to show these incredible creatures. And the the, the rhino monitors do such an amazing job here, and uh, they're, they're they're actually out of the the thirty odd black rhino that are in the Mara. Uh, Masamara system uh, on on a daily average almost every single one of those animals is monitored for more than a few hours a day to make sure that they are safe and as I said I feel sorry for a poacher who walks into this place and uh, he might end up on the wrong end of a spear so Yay! wasn't that amazing so um, are we gonna do a little bumble down the road so uh, Jandre is going to take you on a little wander around with the camera Um, so, Fuzzman Sparkles, number 44 for your mammal list. Isn't that absolutely incredible? Um, and it's a big one. 
literally, and uh, and also one of the best ones to see. So Jandre is going to take you on a little tour of the Mara while I jump down into my turrets and move slightly further down the road. Jandre, are you up for it? Mm. Mm. There, Jandre sounded like a black rhino. That was actually far closer to a black rhino sound than I could do. So as I say, onward. <laughs> So I'm just, I'm not going too far, I'm just trying to get to us to a spot where we're, it's called Majandege, which basically means a water bird. So we're going to try and do some birding. Um, I'm just too excited to, to find lots of things. Oh, and there is a Topi. Hello, Topi. So... This policeman of the Maasai Mara is not doing much policing this morning, is having his morning breakfast. Now it is a male topi. They are such funny looking creatures. And as you look carefully on his horns, there's remnants of mud in there. The males will dip their horns into the mud uh, to try and make themselves look more impressive to other males. Well, he's being a bit shy this morning and he's moving on, so we're going to do the same. While we do that, let's go to someone who's moving around Juma. Let's go see what Ali's up to.